Good morning. So in this video, I'm going to show how I build with bamboo. My local nursery has a discard pile and I can go and help myself to whatever's there. And so that's where I get uh, this bamboo. And then I rotate it when I cut it because otherwise it uh, breaks through and kind of delams on the bottom layer. And then here I'm notching the ends so they fit flush. And then the, the uh, corners... I remove that outer skin because that outer skin is very um, slick or or non-adhesive. And here I'm using a, a brick and rubber bands. The green rubber bands hold the, the pieces on and, and the other two rubber bands uh, apply pressure and hold it together. And I just epoxy all the um, touching surfaces, cut it with uh, resin push it together and then I, I let it sit for a little bit, let the resin thicken and apply some more to um, fill any gaps and then seal those ends. Here I'm notching this end and removing the um, the branch uh, stems and, and also removing uh, the, the spots where I'm going to use epoxy on this, removing that hour later again and, and just smoothing it up and um, getting it ready. And here I'm using the brick technique again and pushing it up against this uh, bush here to, to hold it in place and, and apply a little pressure so I can epoxy this pole where I want it. And then I let it sit overnight, sometimes a couple days. And then here are some pieces from another project. I, I pulled them off and I'm just removing uh, the epoxy so I can uh, work fresh. And here I'm test fitting, seeing that they need to be shaped a little bit, removing um, some of the ends and here moving some of those the drips the epoxy drip down the bottom side and just making it flush and flat and again removing the skin for adhesive and then here I'm using some hemp twine just a, a ball and and I'm essentially kind of tying these pieces together just kind of wrapping it around um, it doesn't need to be super tight it's just mostly to hold them in place um, and then once I do that get it get it all the way I want it and everything looks kind of flush and cut off the ends as much as I can and and then it'll be ready to be epoxied so there it is and here I'm just putting a layer trying to get all the parts that are touching and uh, coating all the hemp twine and then often once it looks good or looks like I got it all I will let it sit let the resin harden a little bit and then try to go over and if I see any like places where there might be a little gap, try to fill that in or any spots that look like they didn't get, um, basically trying to bond as much of the surface together as possible to get, get a good rigid, um, solid connection. And here I've let it sit overnight and, uh, using the brick again, uh, just to have a place to, uh, keep it off the, off the ground and the room to work. And then here I have a, um, a big pile of, of, uh, hemp strands or hairs and, um, and, um, uh, just kind of get a strand of, um, you know, maybe a, a quarter inch in diameter and, and, uh, smooth it out, get it nice and get it nice and even. Then I mix up the uh, epoxy and then immediately coat it. And, and you know, I don't want it dripping, but get everything nice and wetted out. And then once I wrap it around, I have these um, this non-stick um, layer that I can wrap on there, and it compresses and and holds everything together and squeezes out um, to a degree, squeezes out the excess epoxy, and then just wrap that on. And and then once the resin hardens, it's relatively easy to pull this layer off and reuse it. And um, yeah, just I try to I want want to get a, a nice good uh, bond and and smooth surface and kind of acts like a acts like an iron in that it 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 gives a nice glossy kind of smooth layer to the epoxy too and and um, if I'm careful removing those those purple wraps I can get many many uses out of there and um, yeah and the hemp is wrapping the joints with the hemp adds a, a real durable layer. Um, 
I tried it. I've tried ways without the hemp and just the joints itself, and and they would they would bust pretty quick. They didn't hold, not very strong. And then, um, like the key with the the wraps and the joints and the hemp is to make sure that that outer layer on the bamboo is removed. One once that's moved, it opens up kind of a porous layer, and and the epoxy and the wrap really adheres really well to that. And I have yet to have. Um, the joints fail since I've been building them that way. And then here again, next day, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, it's good to go. You know, sometimes in cold weather or, um, maybe I didn't mix it well, the resin, you know, I, my mixture was off the ratio and, and, and so it took longer to kick off, but just as soon as it's hard and, and, and feels good to go, then I'll, I'll pull those wraps off. And here I'm, I do a little pilot hole, switch to a larger drill bit, drill another, hole and then put my quarter inch um, standard tripod bolt size in there and I just had like an inch or inch and a half I had an inch or inch and a half bolt and I just cut the head off and use that as my all thread um, piece and just secure that um, bolt in there and then screw my camera head of choice on there and here I'm using these adhesive um, tie downs and just putting them in the corners. I usually use three to get a nice, like really strong hold. But for this particular one, I wanted to try uh, saving weight and as much material as possible. So I just used um, two. And yeah, so here I'm, uh, I, I got that bolt in there and the, the thing fitted and I, I have it on the board. So I have it all lined up and and, and aiming where I want the camera to aim. And then now I'm um, putting epoxy on here and filling the holes and, and then wrapping this hemp epoxy dipped hemp around there and um, using the wrap to get that all nice and tight. And then I'll clamp this. And, and then when I let that sit overnight again, and then when I remove it, it's uh, nice and strong on there good. It will not um, accidentally come off or unscrew. And then if I want to change out to a different camera, a different camera adapter, I just use like a saw or razor blade and kind of get in close there and trim. Just basically separate the, the camera adapter um, from the epoxy. And then with that and a pair of pliers, I can unscrew it and then put a new one on and use a little, just a tiny bit of more epoxy and that'll resecure it. And then there I was using... I was using shoelaces and leather cords and whatever I have laying around, I've used to tie it on. As long as it's tight and doesn't come loose, it's all good. And then here we go. Yeah, so this is a test run on the nose. Um, the first day I took it out, it a um, it, little bit of adjustment. I can feel the weight on the nose, like almost always. And then here, switching to the tail. And on the tail, I can barely feel the weight. Like, I, there's no real adjustment in my riding style. Whereas with the nose, I can, I can feel the weights there. I can feel that it's, it's affecting the balance of the board a little bit. So I have to adjust my style or just be more aware of it. And I thought that, that camera angle was too narrow. So I'm, I'm like, I want to try a wider view. And, and so I put a different camera on. And here I am, get, getting the foil and my head and everything in the frame. And I... Um, I like this angle a lot better. I really enjoy seeing the, you know, see the foil move and the board, and and I just it's a, I, I just like the look. It's it's uh, different, and and this was a gorgeous day, and uh, lucky to have such good water, coloring and clear clarity, and be able to see the foil and and everything. And yeah, this is a super fun wave. I got this nice little section on the inside here. That was really really fun. Yeah, so thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this and, and it's helpful. And um, yeah, check out my uh, website for more videos like this, and, and I'm hoping to um, share more of what I know about building with bamboo and, and other um, plant-based and animal-based materials.